Hi, I'm uh, Paul Feuerstein, and I'm sitting here at the uh, Yankee Dental Congress. I just finished uh, one of my many courses that I had to give, and if my voice disappears, it's because I've done five out of the six lectures at this point. Uh, what we've been doing at Yankee is trying to give an overview of what's the latest in digital technology, what the trends are in dentistry, and my approach to it is looking at the actual mechanical things that make all these things happen. So in some of my classes we've shown various products, we've shown digital radiography, we've shown comb beam, we've shown uh, digital oppression systems, we've shown uh, computer shade management, we've shown intraoral cameras, digital cameras. So I was trying to think, what are the things that the people are coming back to me and asking me about? They're saying, um, gee, uh, you know, they, they seem to be asking about three different things. Number one, Everyone wants to know about this business about paperless practice. Can we have a paperless practice? And I said, the whole, change the word, make it easier for yourself. Let's change the word from paperless to chartless. There's an initiative by the government, in fact, on us, that by I think it's 2014 or maybe 2015, that supposedly all of our records, all the medical records have to be um, chartless. They have to be electronic, so that if I'm here in Massachusetts, and, and one of my patients down in Oklahoma City has a problem, I can actually get all my information to that dentist immediately, including x-rays, images, photographs, and chart information. And that's the, the interchange. Or if a patient moves, it could be mobile, the information has to be mobile. So the goal here is to become chartless. So part of what they've asked me about is, how do we go chartless? Well, the first thing is you have to start thinking about the infrastructure of your practice. So there has to be a, a computer infrastructure. So you still have to think, well, you have to spend some money and get computers all over the place. Computers in the treatment rooms, computers at the front desk, computers in the back rooms, so that everybody has a chance to have access to this so it's at your fingertips at the chair side. So before you can get involved with anything, digital radiography, digital photography, with some minor exceptions, you really have to think about the whole computerized network. And that's really your first step to becoming paperless or chartless, whichever word you prefer. From there, digital radiography is actually the easiest transition going from film to digital. And in doing so, at this point, I, I can't give you any reason not to use uh, digital radiography. Um, it's, it's, at this point, it's far better than film. And if you haven't looked at it in the last few years, you've looked at it years ago, there's just no excuse anymore. There's no excuse. The return on investment is there for economically, logistically, diagnostically, if you haven't done it, I'm just saying, just you gotta go ahead and do that. So digital radiography is just it. By the way, we have a green initiative going on. We're trying to become more ecologically friendly to the world. And if you think about it, by getting rid of your x-ray film, getting rid of disposal of, of uh, fixer, developer, lead foil, paper packs, all sorts of things like that. So you're actually going green by going through digital radiography. So that's nice. That plus less electricity yeah. used in the processes, you can go on and on and on. Speaking on the world of radiography, we've had an explosion of what's called cone beam CT. And this is basically we've taken CAT scans from the medical industry, squished them down into a small unit, which is a lot lower radiation than people imagined. And we're able to now to take 3D images of people's teeth, jaws, arches. We can see bone, we can see impacted teeth, we can see developing teeth, we can plant implants using this technology. It's remarkable. The, this little stick of shock when you look at these pieces of equipment, but the people who are starting to understand what it's all about are going ahead and actually buying these things. I have endodontist friends who bought cone beam CT for their practice, spent $100,000, because now they can see apical lesions, they can see fractures and roots, they can see down canals, accessory canals. So you don't realize the power of this project process. Most people think more about the implants and things like that, which is great. I don't do a lot of implants personally, so I may not find a need for me in that realm, but I sure have surgeons in my area who do implants for me or periodontists, and they're starting to get on the bandwagon. The other thing is, there was an article in the New York Times not that long ago that said we're, we're killing people with the amount of radiation. But the article stated that people were taking too many comb beams. Well, you don't take a comb beam every week, you don't take it every year, you take it when you need it, and there are new machines that actually will take a small field, 8x8, eight 4x4, eight, 3x3, four four, three three, so you don't have to blow up the patient with an excess radiation. So there's, there's a bit of a scare on that, but if you really look at the way it's being done and collimated, it's very low radiation. In fact, if you take a little quadrant at this point, it's probably the same radiation that you would take with D-film with one film, so I wouldn't even concern myself. So that's comb beam. And then, the other, of course, the other big push is with digital impressions. We have four people on the, in the marketplace right now. We have Cadent Itero, we have Serona with Cirec, and we have um, 
E4D with Henry Schein's product, and 3M has the Lava COS system. All four systems work. End of the story. The restorations out there, there's thousands of restorations that have been done. The technology is verified. You don't have to worry about taking an impression and getting the lab calling you back and saying, I missed the margin, I missed this, I missed that, I didn't have enough approval clearance. Just get it. Are there new products coming out? Of course there are new products being developed. They're coming out every week. They're probably going to come out four, uh, four, four more this year. But it's like waiting for any technology. I bought the Droid phone well, as soon as it came out. The Droid 2 is far better than my Droid phone, but I have my Droid phone. I've had it for over a year, so it still works. So I would be very, uh, if you're ready to do it, dive into the technology. So I think just in general, my, my sense is that, yeah, we have to put some energy and some dollars into these things, but look at your practice. Look at the way you practice, the way you handle mm -hmm. things. Think of the return and, on investment for you personally, for your time, your management, your brain, your, your calmness about doing things, your, your being more sure about things because they're more accurate because of the digital. And I think that's the push we should be making in dentistry, in digital dentistry. So I, I encourage everybody to continue to read our, our journals, look at all our things on the web, look at all the articles, take as many courses as you possibly can, go to the big dental meetings, go to the small dental meetings, go to study clubs, do whatever you can, learn the information, read all the information, make decisions, and if you have some questions, come back to this website, come back to our magazines, send us emails, send us questions, whatever you want to do. Thanks so much.